No, I think I'm helping myself because I'm uh, pointing out the tremendous corruption that's taken place in Baltimore and other Democratic-run cities. All you have to do is look at the past mayors in Baltimore, see what happened. No, I think I'm helping myself, and I'll tell you what. The White House and myself and letters and emails and phone calls have received more phone calls than I think on any other subject of people from Baltimore and other cities corruptly run by Democrats thanking me for getting involved. Those people are living in hell in Baltimore in the history of our country. But people have called from Baltimore thanking me so much because all that money that's been spent over 20 years has been stolen and wasted by people like Elijah Cummings. D.C. Congresswoman Norton. Uh, a lot of people are new to the area, so I just want to say just a couple of things. She's represented the District of Columbia as the non-voting delegate to Congress since January of 1991. That goes back that far. Yeah, I covered your first <laughs> campaign. Uh, she's also a veteran of the Civil Rights Movement. Uh, she, veteran Democrat. You've worked with Republican and Democratic presidents. I want to say that President Trump today said he's hearing from African Americans who agree with him in the things he said about Baltimore. Could you respond to that? <laughs> well... Everybody knows he's not hearing from African Americans. The reason that he's not hearing from African Americans is that instead of going head on head with Cummings, he went after Cummings' constituents. They turned out to be black, a majority black city. That perpetuates the thing that's out on him already, his racism. And thus, what has come out of that is a discussion of racism. <laughs> because he hasn't had a fair fight with Cummings. Now, why does he want to fight with Cummings? And Bruce, this hasn't been brought up. I'm on the committee, Cummings Committee, Oversight, <coughs> Oversight and Reform Committee. Mm -hmm. This committee has uh, sought <coughs> subpoenas, <coughs> pardon me, for, from Trump's children, and Jer from Ivanka Trump, from Jared Kushner, and from Trump himself as part of our oversight responsibilities. So go at us on that. But he decided to go low, go after the people of Baltimore who are just not in this. Right. And now the president seems to, to, to want to pivot. This isn't so much about Cummings, he says, uh, and it certainly isn't about African Americans. It's about the conditions that African Americans in Baltimore are living under. And he's I, you know, he says a lot of things, you, you, you know, that sounds like he's making them up, but he says billions and billions of dollars have gone into <laughs> Baltimore and other U.S. cities controlled by Democrats. He wants an investigation, says all that money has been stolen. You know, he better listen to his advisors who tell him he's going way too far. Uh, if he wants to, uh, again, he, he continues, though, to attack Baltimore. Blacks in Baltimore, as majority black city, identify with their city. So when you attack Baltimore, you attack them. Uh, so when he says that he's gone after conditions in Baltimore, uh, yeah. And there are some, some conditions in parts of Baltimore. By the way, it has one of the higher um, per capita incomes. Uh, and <laughs> because, because if you look at his entire district, Absolutely right. it, it, it is not a district that is altogether poor. So if it's not the whole district, then who is it in the district? It's the African-Americans in the district. Okay, um, I know Donald Trump, when he was uh, uh, again coming on with his second wave of criticism of Baltimore, he criticized just about everything about Baltimore except for the police department, which is the Justice Department has established quite some time ago. It's been corrupt. It's, it's under, you know, Justice Department investigation. Why do you suppose he left out the police department? Again, if he were going one-on-one -on -one with Trump, he might want to take that on. But again, he sees through the member to his African-American constituents, and it's a cardinal rule of politics. Go after the member, don't go after the people. Right. Second round of Democratic debates begin tonight in Detroit. There will be two shifts tonight. The candidates in the spotlight will be Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, Beto O'Rourke, and uh, Pete uh, Betajek. Tomorrow, frontrunner Joe Biden will be on stage, sandwiched between Kamala Harris and Cory Booker. So what can we expect from the candidates? What Are you do you asking think? me that? Yeah, what do you think? Uh, I think what you can expect from the candidates is a way to get, keep them getting thinned out. We've got too many candidates. We've got to hone in on somebody that we need to beat Trump. Right. Um, a lot of people are concerned that the Democrats may be forming a circular firing squad, taking one another out. Is that a concern of yours? That is a concern of mine. 
uh, because <laughs> not that they, they haven't attacked one another very, very much now. Watch right. out for the circular squad tonight, though, because instead of uh, with this poor performance, or not as good performance, instead of the vice president going down, he went up. So they've got to find a way, if the thinning out is going to be done, that it not be me. And so I think there will be much more fighting tonight than there have been in the other two debates. Yeah, when I think of circular firing squad on the part of Democrats, what I think of is, is that they don't come together and rally around the ticket, you know, that you come up with. Well, there's it, no ticket. Well, there will be a ticket eventually, but but you'll still have some of the infighting that you <coughs> had with Bernie Sanders, you know, uh, uh, the Clinton people, you know, in the last go round. And so a lot of people stay at home, they'll break off, and uh, they won't support the ticket. Is that a concern? It's not a concern because the basic, who is on the table, who is, who, who is on the ballot, who's on the table, right. I wish he was on the table, is Donald Trump. I think you're going to see it coming together like you've never seen, no matter who is chosen. 